Hey, before I start the video, I just want to say thank you guys so much for 8,000 subscribers. I cannot believe I made it this far. I have been stuck at 7,000 subscribers for three years now, but I don't really care. I'm still making videos for you guys. I want to thank you guys so much for your support and subscribing. Uh, the subscriber count usually drops for me and then goes back up, drops, and um, so it doesn't matter. I'm not going to change anything if it goes back down to 7,000, so just in case, I'm, I'm still going to put this up anyways, but I just want to say thank you guys so much for your support. Um, I'm still try my best to make uh, make my videos better I'm still gonna be moving into my new place soon it's just gonna take a bit longer uh, than I initially intended um, I'll explain it more in another episode of chat with Matt but anyways uh, thank you guys so much now enjoy the reviews <music> holy crap guys it has been when was the last time I made a double movie review? Like, has it been like a year and a half already? Did I even make one last year? But oh my god, I actually got to see two movies this weekend. And Regal Theaters are finally starting to reopen. I saw both of these movies in Regal Theater. It's so great to finally be back. And it, I really hope it's permanent this time. I really hope so. I have high hopes. I mean, with the vaccine out, but let's not get into that now. Let's talk about these movies. Now, I don't have much to say about these two movies uh, because I didn't really feel like talking a whole lot about them, but uh, I'm just going to give you guys what I thought about these movies. It's basically two quick movie reviews, but uh, yeah. Anyways, first one I want to talk about is Wrath of Man. Sorry it took me a while to get this review out, but uh, I had to wait another week. Uh, because it was Mother's Day, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much why. Now, Wrath of Man is directed by Guy Ritchie and stars Jason Statham, who returned together after doing a movie or a few I have never actually seen before, and of course this involves Statham as a man named H, who is a dark and mysterious character working at a cash truck company responsible for moving hundreds of millions of dollars around Los Angeles each week. Easily the reason to see this movie is Jason Statham. I personally thought he was great and really entertaining in the movie. And really the only character I liked throughout the film, as the other characters I thought were pretty bland. I mean, Jason Statham's character is nothing to write home about. I just thought he gave a good performance in the fact that he was in so many other films and he was really entertaining in those. I thought he was the most entertaining part of this entire film. And like I said before, the other characters are pretty bland, including the villain who... villains and other characters I completely forgot their names, but uh, yeah. The action was also pretty fun too. It's pretty violent for the most part. Some of the movie kind of reminds me of a Grand Theft Auto-like movie a little bit. In fact, if that's what this movie was called, Grand Theft Auto the movie, or just Grand Theft Auto, it could have easily been the best video game movie of all time out there. Uh, well, I, I think I probably would have preferred Detective Pikachu a bit more, but I think it would be on par with Mortal Kombat. But the fact is, it's called Wrath of Man, not Grand Theft Auto. But it's pretty amazing how Guy Ritchie made three movies in a row for the past three years, and one of them was a Disney adaptation. I still think his last film, The Gentleman, was a much better film. I kind of find it more rewatchable, and that's a film that I think got a lot better the more that I thought about it. Like, I rewatched that film twice, I own the Blu-ray, and I've just had a really good time with that film. But I really like the fact that him and Jason Statham made movies together in the past, and this is a return for them working together. It's really nice to see, and I might want to check out those films that they made in the past, or the one or two. Uh, let me know, because I, I didn't even look up uh, the director's history, so I know nothing about it, but yeah. I'm going to give Wrath of Man a 3.5 out of 5. Really solid film, I really think you should check this one out. Now, pretty much for the main event, um, this is actually the film I saw first, but I saved it for last because it's kind of the film that I kind of want to talk about a little bit more, but don't really, so don't have too much to say. But anyways, next up is my review for Spiral, which was supposed to come out last year, but uh, um, of course got delayed over and over and almost got a Blu-ray release immediately. One time I saw on Amazon it was going to be released on Blu-ray, but they were all like, nope, 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 we're still going to give it a chance for the theater, so... They put it in the theaters. Now this movie is uh, the ninth film in the Saw franchise a little bit, which goes into a different sort of route. It stars Chris Rock, who goes after a criminal mastermind who isn't Jigsaw, but this pig-like thing who unleashes a twisted form of justice. Now I saw this in IMAX and it was so great getting to experience this film in IMAX after eight months after seeing Tenet. As for the film itself, I do think it's better than most of the other Saw films in the series, but it's not really saying much. Honestly, the film kind of felt a bit more like a comedy, mainly due to the writing for the characters, especially Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson. I mean, I really appreciate uh, I really appreciate the fact that Chris Rock was into going into a more serious role, 
but uh, the fact that he gave off so many uh, comedic uh, lines of dialogue, it kind of took the seriousness away from the movie a little bit, but uh, I, I actually did like them in the movie for the most part as, as their characters. The performances are a little stale, but uh, for the most part, I, I, I liked seeing them in the movie. I mean, they're probably... Uh, well, Samuel L. Jackson isn't in the movie that much, Chris Rock isn't in for most, but he's probably going to be the one of the Saw protagonists that I'm going to remember the most throughout the franchise. But the movie feels a lot less serious than they're trying to make it out to be. Also, the traps are pretty creative for the most part. My favorite one probably has to be the one involving a train, probably because of how disturbed I was by it. I was just like on the edge of my seat, like, oh, oh, oh. But uh, sometimes I like having that feeling, but... Uh, it's not really scary, but it did affect me, so I will give it that. But the tone and the writing for the movie is kind of what drew me back from the from the way that the film was directed. I appreciate that they tried something a little different for the series, but it doesn't quite reach the roots of the original film, and honestly, no other film in the series can, in my opinion. It's not a bad movie, but it doesn't quite reach the horror roots they were trying to go for. I'm gonna give Spiral a 3 out of 5. It's a sort of... it's uh... they tried, okay? I mean, I can say it's definitely better than Saw 5 and 7, which I think are the worst ones. 4 is okay, um, I'm not entirely sure how I would rank them, I didn't really think about making a list, but the first one would definitely, uh, make it... the first would definitely be Saw 1, but, uh, yeah, we'll just see what happens next if they decide to go for another route. Maybe they'll call the next film Saw X or something like that. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you excuse me... Oh, there's no button. I have to go and get ready for work this week. It's about time. <laughs> it definitely took a longer time than the first time this happened, but uh, I cannot wait. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Word out.